If you're looking for explanations, I'm not the one to give them to you. If you're looking for a name, we don't have one. Our people are old. Old enough that we can remember a time when we were the only ones here. Although, technically, only the elders were the ones physically here back then. We can all remember it once we've... Well, once whatever has happened to us has happened to us, I suppose. We can see all the way back to when the first trees grew here, and we can see and feel everything that happens here now, all at the same time. Yeah, that's the sort of shit I have to put up with now. I think this will be the last time I can write anything. I'm still in and out at the minute. Sometimes I'm just Emily. Mostly, I'm sort of... Emily plus, I suppose. But even then, I'm still me. Sort of, I think. It's really hard to say, and trying to explain how this works now that I'm Emily plus is basically impossible. I'll do the best I can, but you don't have words for most of it. Telling you in person would be difficult. Telling you in written words is, well, I can't. And trust me when I say you don't want me telling you in person. Not now. The other reason for this being my last post is that electronics hurt like hell now. I think it's something to do with the frequencies they put out. It causes headaches, nausea, general feelings of achy unpleasantness. Basically, not something I'm willing to put up with. Don't come out here. That's why I'm sitting through what feels like a wicked case of the flu to put down my last words for you all. I know what we said last time about coming out here, but just fucking ignore it. Kit and Cassie's family were concerned about the fact that they hadn't heard anything from us, especially since we were due to be at their parents' house for some big welcome back from the woods barbecue by about midday yesterday. They came out here a few hours ago, her father and a couple of uncles and cousins. Cassie went up and tried to convince them to leave, but they'd seen Curtis's truck on the way in and had found what was left of Kit and Alex. They were pretty upset, understandably, and wanted us to leave with them before it was too late. <laughs> what surprised me was that the first thing Cassie's dad did was grab her and yell in her face. You crossed the stones at night, didn't you? What were you thinking, Cassandra? Didn't Grandpa teach you anything? Cassie just kept trying to get them to leave. It was almost like she cared. Maybe she even did. I don't remember anything from before I arrived here, but you never know. Maybe if you put my actual parents in front of me, I'd at least remember who they were. We killed Cassie's family, anyway. They point-blank refused to leave without her, and worse, they were talking about doing something. Given it was her great-grandfather who carved out a human safe space and put the stones up in the first place, we couldn't risk it. Especially not since her dad and uncles actually seemed to know what they were talking about. They looked surprised when most of us came out of the trees and started walking up to the cabin. They looked a bit more than surprised when the elders followed us over the Ring of Stones. That's what complacency does for you. Never rely on hundred-year charms, folks. Especially when they can be cancelled out by something as simple as a gift of beloved blood. I miss Jim. I do. He'd prefer it this way, though. He was never going to be allowed to leave. And given a choice between this and death, well, he was a very rational man. According to the big man, some people just can't make the transition. They fight it so hard it rips their mind apart. They end up either dying right away or wandering the forest. Neither one thing nor the other. Completely insane. And he can tell who can make the transition and who can't. The only reason he took the twins is because he needed someone to watch us, and he didn't want us to panic and make a run for it that first night. We'll look after them, though. It probably won't be necessary for very long, but we will. I was touch and go, apparently. They called it a difficult birth afterwards. If it hadn't been for... If I hadn't helped Jim, I mean, 
I probably would have ended up like the twins. Lucky for me, the big man was set on having me. Part of it was that I was due a reward for not eating the flesh of the elder Curtis killed. Don't ask what happened to Curtis. Seriously, don't. But weird as it sounds, the rest was that I'm Welsh. Strange but true, I'm the first woman they've seen with the accent. And it turns out, he's a fan. Then my little sojourn out there with him just sealed the deal. So my advice to you is this. If you decide to go into the forest for some reason, fuck knows why, but it's your choice. Try not to kill anything. Plants included. We don't like it. If you do have the overwhelming urge to kill something, then for fuck's sake, make sure it looks like it's supposed to first. Why? I'll give you a little example on that one. Draw a deer from memory, then compare it to the real thing. Not so easy, is it? Judgmental pricks. And you really don't want to kill one of us. Not even without meaning to. Because when it comes to our people, we don't really go in for mercy. There's someone coming up the road now, so I think Cassie's dad got the word out that there was an issue. Probably called the police after finding the corpses. Sounds like it's going to be a case of retreat and observe, which works for me. Gives me time to get to know the new family. Plus, I'll, I'll need to take it easy for a little while. Remember what I said. Remember us. And if you call me a goat man, I'll track you down and rip your fucking throat out.